everybody to the final episode of A Progressive Revolution for 2017. This is the Christmas edition slash Boxing Day edition, whatever you want to call it. I am currently filming on Boxing Day, so this is a late episode, but also the final episode for the year. So how are we going to end this? Well, um, this is going to be the most reactionary uh, episode I've ever done. Uh, this is mainly going to be me... Um, so normally, normally how this would work is that I would do stories and there'd be lots of facts and figures and stuff. But today is just going to be me, uh, relatively off the cuff with like about some some very basic notes just to uh, just to just to remind me to stay on track. Uh, so the reactions today are pretty much going to be so there was the Jenk Yuga controversy this week. There is the race at the bottom on tax cuts for the rich. Australia's unbearable weakness during the. UN's condemnation vote of the US. And finally, a funny story to end things off with the year, because that's how we do things on this show, is Chinese me- is China's message to Chinese students, which essentially comes down to, for the love of God, stay indoors, the Australians are out to get you. Funny, and we'll get to it later. But let's start off with the Jenk Yuga controversy. Jenk Yuga, who is the CEO and founder of the progressive news channel known as TYT, or the Young Turks, um, he's been in a bit of shit the last seven days, well, less than that, but anyway, um, seven days sounds better, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so basically some, some blog posts that he wrote in the early 2000s were uncovered, um, and people were not happy about these. Now, the f- I do want to point out some things before I continue. So first of all, these blog posts were not exactly a secret, um, in the sense that um, Jenk has uh, taken the piss out of himself and been highly critical of himself as to his opinions back in those days. Um, and I even believe at some points or another, he has actually, without specifically referenced this, referenced uh, these blogs in particular. Now, the real controversy really comes down to one uh, sentence that he makes when he's talking about um, his... Um, inability to get laid enough while he's in Miami, funny, Um, and basically he writes, I don't have the quote in front of me, but basically something along the lines of like, uh, women are genetically inferior because they won't have sex enough, I'm pretty sure that was, that's uh, roughly right, so people lost their minds over this quote, and to be honest, there have been different interpretations as to whether he was, um, as to whether this was a serious comment, or or as to whether um, he was taking the piss out of himself, um, because he was just a bit shit while he was in Miami, um, I, as a as a long time TYT viewer, I am knowing Jenk how he is now in comparison to how he was in the early two thousand. Just purely based on being a long term viewer of that show, I would hazard a guess he was probably joking. But of course, we don't know that because we'd have to go back in time and you know surveillance him and uh, you know what his intentions were. Um, so anyway, people have lo- you know people lost their collective minds and. He came out and did a, in my opinion, a really good apology. Um, he gave no excuses. Um, and he basically just said, look, I was conservative at the time. I had disgusting, ugly views, which were unacceptable. And this, if this blog post offended people, which I'm sure it did, I humbly apologize. And my, you know, this reading, this is truly ugly. And anyway, I thought it was good. So that should have been the end of this. That should have concluded... This should have concluded it. Um, but of course, it did not. Um, so this, of course, led to um, a consequence which I don't think should have ever happened. And that was that... Um, so in January, um, Jenk, along with Kyle Kalinske, who's the host of Secular Talk, and former Bernie Sanders officials, founded the Justice Democrats... So they're, they're the uh, progressive wing of the Democratic Party, and they essentially, in 2018, are going to primary corporate Democrats who take corporate money, and they're going to defeat them in primaries without taking any any uh, super PAC money or, corp- or money from corporations, which is awesome. I love the idea, and it was awesome. So they turn around, and um, in a unanimous vote, they decided that Jenks should resign, or... If you want to put in the harshest way possible, he was essentially fired from the Justice Democrats. Now, I think now, especially when you find out the details, which I'm about to get into in this, um, I don't agree with this at all. So this is where we enter Kyle Kalinsky. 
Um, so given that this was a unanimous vote, he would have also voted to um, to making Jenk resign. Um, however, Karl Kalinske has also resigned from the Justice Democrats, citing that he only voted to, to get rid of Jenk because A, Jenk wanted to resign, which is something the Justice Democrats failed to ever mention, um, but also the fact that um, none of the candidates were involved in the decision, which the Justice Democrats weirdly claimed, um, the candidates had nothing to do with the decision, and it was actually it was actually the majority of the Justice Democrat staffers that wanted Jenk gone, and so Kyle was put in an awkward position where um, he either had to one override the wishes of both the majority of the staffers and Jenk himself, which in his opinion and also in my opinion as well would have made him undemocratic, or he votes with the Justice Dem or he votes to get rid of Jenk in what Kyle described as a slightly spineless move. Um, I don't agree with that at all, but, you know, but anyway, I think Kyle handled, handled this the best way he could, which was, he voted with the staffers, he's then come out and said, I don't agree with the staffers by any stretch of the imagination, and thus, I'm done with Justice Democrats. Um, and his messaging is probably the same as mine, is that, at the end of the day, whilst the organisation in itself has failed on this matter, because Jenk should not have had to resign, and their, um, their framing of this issue was horrendous and was horrible and you know it was when um one of the when one of the when one of the co-founders had to put out a statement about the statement um basically everyone read his original statement as um as that you know um uh, basically if you have ever said anything bad on the internet ever um you're immediately disqualified and he even put out a statement saying that which I essentially interpreted, and you can go and you very easily look at, look on this on Twitter and stuff, and read the comments for yourself and interpret it however you want to. But I interpreted um, the statement, the the statement to the statement as, well, I'm writing a statement to say that what I actually said isn't true, but this is actually what I believe. Um, and I think Kyle put it the best when he said that um, it's basically the media wing and the and the political wing um, going, you know, going their separate ways. Um, it, I, I went and explored in the comments and, you know, on, on all these videos and stuff, and the, the general impression that I got was that most people reckon the Justice Democrats are, are fucked, uh, because they only get caught, they're not going to get covered by the corporate media, um, they've lost their only, uh, media coverage, and stuff like this is what turns people off of left-wing groups, is when they become too purist. Look, the reality is, is that we all, that I'm sure, and I, in fairness, I don't actually write very much on the internet, but I'm sure that, you know, I will have said something on these shows one day that gets uh, misconstrued or um, people, or, you know, maybe something I've said, ha you know, comes out and it's horrendous or whatever, 40 years down the line, right? It could happen, right? That's, that's what happens when you start, um, you know, doing a, doing a new show like this and getting involved in politics, you know, early in life. Um, and I don't think anyone should be um, penalised for that. I mean, Jenk is the best example of someone that's transformed his uh, political views and opinions. He went from, um, he went from, you know, the guy that, um, you know, denied the Armenian genocide. He went from, you know, being the guy that held pro-war rallies, as he himself has referenced many times. And all those positions, and, mo and a lot of his positions have changed. Some haven't, and he's, Cenk is not exactly the most, um, you know, he's not as left as some of his other colleagues, including that of Jimmy Dore and Karl Kalinske, but at the end of the day, he's, you know, it's funny, Justice Democrat says that he's not the appropriate, he's no longer the appropriate face of their movement, but it's funny because I actually think this makes him even more appropriate. Um, the Justice Democrats are all about getting rid of corporate Democrats and being different. Well, you're trying to, you know, their job is trying to get people to turn to their side. What better way to have a guy who's the face of your movement that has changed and this controversy could have been turned into something wonderful and super positive um, for a movement that I support and that a lot of people viewing the show will support. Um, so the fact that they've just, 
you know, ditched him to the sidelines because he's no, because he's what he once said something that may or may not have been a joke, you know, what, 15 years ago. Um, so I think justice, justice, Dem- I think, so it's funny because the other thing is, is the justice Democrats allegedly did this because they believed that it was either them that had to go or the, or Jenk that had to go. Um, but it's funny because I think the justice Democrats are going to end up being the ones that suffer the most. Um, so I guess the last thing I'll end with is that it'll be really interesting to see what happens with Jenk the next few weeks. Um, does he disappear off TYT for a couple of weeks? Does he stay on? Like what happens to Jenk? I, I hope nothing happens to Jenk because, you know, he has paid time and time and time and again um, for the things that he said and for something that he wrote 15 years ago. I think, hope you know, you would hope that if sanity existed in the world that you know, and I'm not, you know, if he said something tomorrow that was horrendous, then yeah, we should all come out against him. That's different. Um, you know, it was funny. The other, th- the one last thing I'll say is that, um, loads of people in the comments made a great point is that, look, you already knew w- when you decided to make Jenk the face of Justice Democrats, you already knew about, um, his, his past statements and things that he's done. Um, and people specifically did mention the Armenian genocide in the context. Like, you know that he was a former Armenian genocide denier, but that was okay. But the minute he said anything bad, um, but, you know, the minute anything else got discovered that he's already referenced anyway, so it's not a surprise to anyone, um, all of a sudden you ditch him. It's kind of a it's kind of a dick move. Hopefully nothing else happens to Jenk. And I give huge props to Karl Kalinske for, uh, for wading through a very difficult situation. So a couple of weeks ago, Trump passed historic tax cuts. Um, from memory, it was, it was over it was over three, well, three trillion? Not the amount, three trillion dollars? Anyway, the point is, it was a shit ton of money and it's a, it's a historic tax cut. So of course, leaders across the world, including from Australia, were like, fuck yeah, it's got to, got to join them. Now, coming, coming to Australia, um, the coalition have been wanting tax cuts for corporations for the last couple of years. They want to reduce the corporate tax rate to 25%. And Scott Morrison, and I'm going to paraphrase, but he basically was like, Trump did it. Let's fucking do it, man. I'm concerned for two reasons. One is that we shouldn't be giving tax cuts to corporations. <laughs> it's absolutely preposterous. Um, we have seen time and time and time and again that giving tax cuts to the rich and to corporations does not generate jobs. It, does, it doesn't generate anything. If out of anything, as we've seen in the past, it actually can result in jobs being lost. So this idea that somehow that um, trickle-down economics is somehow going to boost the economy is absolutely preposterous. Um, and also the other thing that's absolutely preposterous is that they keep on claiming that Australia's corporate tax rate is not um, is not competitive internationally. There are two bullshit points to this. One is that if you look at um, the top tw- that the uh, the twenty um, what's it the um, the to- uh, the OCED is that was called the top twenty most economically prosper- prosperous countries in the world, that we're number nine. So we're like middle of the road or middle of the pack. And two, we've, two, it's been shown historically that sugar, again, as I've already said, sugar down economics doesn't work. So just to very quickly explain what sugar down economics is for those who are unaware, basically the idea is that um, if we get, if we centralize, um, if we centralize money in the hands of the rich and the corporations, that that money will trickle down onto onto lower economic brackets, which, by the way, how fucking condescending is that, the idea of them saying, well, you know, you're, you're not one of us, so you've got to wait and you've got to plead and beg and maybe just get a bit of a trickle. Um, now, you may have you may have also heard of this as supply-side supply side economics. Um, part of the reason why it was, part of the reason why it's more commonly called a trickle-down economics because it was a, uh, was a successful um, political attack back in the 90s, I believe. Uh, by might have even been Bill Kil- Bill Clinton that coined the term, but I'm not 100 sure about that. Um, so yeah, so this idea that somehow that trickle down economics boosts the economy is preposterous. So right, so one other thing I would quickly say about this is that at the moment it kind of at the moment it kind of feels like we're going down the road of like you know race to the bottom. So like what's going to happen? So like so so what? Australia will be what? Okay, let's just pretend in a in a in a in a Worst case scenario that Australia becomes the number one lowest um, tax place in the world, right? For corporations. 
and then what we and then what 10 years later we become number three or four and it's like oh shit we're going to regain one so we're just going to keep on lowering and lowering and lowering our corporate tax to what we have fucking zero and then we have no fucking money to fund shit shit the other thing i got to say as well is that um so i read a really good article by the conversation that i'll link in the description below uh basically that um comparing australia's tax system to the rest of the world is kind of bullshit it's like comparing apples to oranges um definitely go read that article because i will botch this explanation but basically um and a certain circum so um basically some countries um do double taxation and australia doesn't do that double taxation and this is to do with specifically with board members and stuff like that so go read that article because i don't want to explain it because i will botch it go read the article i will link that in the description below so the un held a vote to condemn the U to condemn the us for moving their embassy to jerusalem now this is a terrible, awful idea, just based on this small fact that it could potentially destabilise the entire region. Oops, Daisy. And this was Australia's chance to, well, this was actually the world's chance to stand up to Trump. Which, by the way, the, the uh, to my knowledge anyway, the UN, the, the resolution went through, so it's official. Uh, the UN officially condemns the US for moving the embassy. So, good. Now, did Australia vote to condemn the US. Of course they fucking didn't. They were completely pathetically weak and they abstained from the vote. <laughs> Fuck sex. You know, for a country that talks about how fucking strong it is, it, it, it just, I find it embarrassing that time and time and time again, which in fairness Turnbull's been better than other pr prime ministers, so let's give him credit for that. But it amazes me that fucking gov government after government after government just constantly just Yes, 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 Alpha, yes, Alpha country, I'll do whatever you say, like, it's just, I find it unbelievable. <laughs> um, should we have voted to condemn the US's awful, awful foreign policy decision? Of course we should have. Um, and also, apparently, <laughs> I read yesterday that apparently, um, Guatemala has decided to join the US in, uh, moving their embassy to, to Jerusalem, so, um, Awful idea. Um, and then what I thought was amazing is on the Trump thing is that, you know, Trump came in and said, you know, this, us, us, us moving the embassy to Jerusalem doesn't, doesn't mean that we have, you know, doesn't mean our stance has changed on being neutral between um, the Palestinians and the Israelis. Of course it does, you idiot. <laughs> the Chinese embassy in canberra issued a public safety <laughs> announcement to to its nationals this is unbelievable right um so this is in response to a allegedly a rising number of incidents involving chinese nationals and i'm just going to read my favorite quote because i love this so much um <laughs> so this is in response to i guess several things one is that uh well first you've got the issue with the south china sea that, you know, obviously earlier in, very recently just put Destiari in the shit. Um, you've got the media talking shit about China, which, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't watch mainstream news that much. Um, but to my knowledge, it's, you know, fairly reasonable. <laughs> I mean, the media is always, I mean, Australian media is normally going to, you know, mainstream Australian media is always going to be pro-Australia. That just makes sense. So, you know, they're obviously going to have the Australian position. Because why would they not? That just makes sense. Um, so, obviously, the Communist Party in China is not happy <laughs> with the media. They're not happy with... And also not happy... They're not also happy because this year there's been a lot of dragging in the mud about their um, about their um, interference in Australian politics. Specifically to do with foreign donations, which still amazes me they're even still legal. But anyway, um, so this then resulted in... Um, so uh, there was a so there was a reported statement from a uh, from a university research fellow known as Yu Li, and um, the, the, I love this statement. This is awesome. In China, many teenagers love to eat, drink, and have fun outside after midnight and go home at three a.m. or later. But in Australia, the common knowledge is that you shouldn't stay out too late. I love this. This is awesome. Um, okay, this is the most pathetic way I've ever seen of getting at another country. This this is just pathetic. Okay, yeah, China, you've you've your name's been dragged in the mud. Fairly reasonably, <laughs> um, but 
it's funny because they're 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 reacting, um, but like nothing's been done. It's like you still have the ability to to bribe Australian politicians. Like it's still on the table. It's just not an issue. Um, I mean, so what? Your name's been dragged in the mud a little bit. You still get to bribe. You still get to bribe our politicians. So you shouldn't. Um, you should be all. You know, you should be all good. Anyway, I'll link the article to this below because this is funny. Um, anyway, this is preposterous. This is just. This is insane. Um, so yeah, China not happy with a lot of people apparently. Government media, and you know, if you're them and your name's been dragged through the mud all year, I mean, you're not used to having anyone bad, you know, bad talk you in your own country. So I guess for them, it's not usual. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a fun little story to end things. So thank you very much for tuning in to the final episode of 2017 of a progressive revolution we'll be back next year um i don't know when yet um i don't know whether i'm gonna do one for new years or not um and i think i'll do this slightly differently next year as well so i will get back to you on that once all of that has been uh, determined so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time when we get back to a progressive revolution um and i'll see you guys later stay progressive